What's up everybody? Welcome to Slow-Mo Laboratory. And today we're gonna pop some popcorn and film it in super super slow motion. But, you know, oil popping, I bet I'll get some safety for that. Don't wanna get it in your face, do you? What do popcorn and uranium have in common? Both popcorn and uranium can change forms spontaneously and can't ever change back. Of course you wanna have safety because I don't like oil popping everywhere. Scary stuff. In uranium we call it radioactive decay, but with popcorn we call it snack time. Elements like potassium, thorium, and uranium can undergo this spontaneous radioactive decay, just like the popcorn kernels in our experiment. Today, Jeremy will show us just how common radiation can be. There's radiation in the rocks below us, the sky above from the cosmos. Uh, we ourselves are radioactive. The Geiger counter is a device for measuring radiation. It's simply a, a power source, a big battery, and a meter on the top which measures so shows you the radiation level and the detector itself. Table salt is sodium chloride, this is potassium chloride and there's about 150 grams of potassium in this which is about the same of amount of potassium that's in the human body. Less than 1% of that potassium is naturally radioactive. Each beep you hear is a unit of radiation being detected. Other naturally radioactive foods include bananas, potatoes, lima beans, brazil nuts, and even carrots. Why did Channel 4 ask a banana fearmonger and chemist about nuclear fallout when a university is full of real scientists anyway? Is that not yellow journalism? Shouldn't that be considered misleading, even hostile? Dare I say even a hate crime? <laughs> You would have to eat 29 million bananas to get the same radiation as a cubic meter of radioactive air from the hot radioactive particles pouring at a New Mexico depository. Have you ever had a dental x-ray? An x-ray is radiation that passes right through the skin, but gets stopped by teeth and bone, giving us an image of the inside of your mouth. These internal radionuclide substances like plutonium, like strontium-90, uh, like tritium, um, and a whole range of other substances, including uranium, which is very dangerous, uh, existing in the form of particles. These substances carry an enormously high risk of, of, of causing ill health in your children and in, in parents and in pregnant women and in, in, any, in, in animals and in all creatures that live in this area where, which is contaminated. Have you ever used a bandage like this one? The contents of this package have gone through the process of irradiation, where gamma rays were used to kill off any bacteria and sterilize the product. This, this, these sicknesses uh, that you get are a result of inhaling and eating substances that are contaminated with hot particles of uranium, plutonium, and, and other uh, radioactive substances. Uh, none of these substances can be detected with Geiger counters. So when you measure the one microsievert per hour, you do not include any of these substances in that one microsievert per hour. In the same way, some foods, cosmetics, and other products have been irradiated to ensure that they're clean and free of harmful bacteria. When, when, we, when we open up a car air filter and we put the elements next to a piece of x-ray film, uh, and develop the film, we see little white dots all over the film, little white splashes of light. These, these are called hot particles and they are very small, you cannot see them, they are almost like a gas. And if they are inside the car filters, because the car breathes air, this is the same as people breathing air, they will be inside the people, inside the lungs, inside the nose, inside the gut, and they will be causing significant harm. Directing and pinpointing this radiation also allows doctors to irradiate and kill cancer cells. This is very serious matter. In the, la in, the last, um, in the last 20 years, an enormous amount of scientific evidence has emerged from, from people who were exposed to the Chernobyl radiation, which is very similar to the Fukushima radiation. And this evidence shows that, that the risk model that is being used now to define limits totally wrong and for some substances it's, out, it's in, in error by a factor of more than 1,000 times. 
Behind me is an example of one of the early cobalt cancer therapy machines uh, that was created in Canada for the first time in 1951. Nuclear reactors are capable of making large quantities of the radioactive element cobalt-60, which were used in this machine. You would have a patient uh, lie on this bed and in this bulbous head on, above them would be a lump of cobalt-60, which is radioactive, shielded from the patient initially by a lead shutter. You would move this so that the, the source was directly pointed at the cancer itself and then open the shutter and let a beam of radiation um, go insert itself into the cancer and kill the cancer cells. Radiation therapy like this is widely used today to treat cancer with many different techniques to target various cancer cells. Most of the radiation that humans receive doesn't come from dental x-rays, cancer therapy, or even from the sun. 70% of it comes from the earth. Radioactive elements in the Earth's core are constantly keeping the interior molten hot and keeping you and I alive. I have acted as an expert witness in more than 20 court cases in which, in which this issue has been uh, raised. And these court cases have all been settled for one because in front of a, a, an independent judge, the evidence is so strong that the case is, is, is always, always uh, white. And I hope that I can help uh, the citizens of Fukushima to enable them to make sure that the children are, are safe and removed to a safe place before they get sick. Okay, well, thank you very much for listening. What they should be looking for is uranium-238 because that is the bulk of the waste and is the real issue. And because they had a fire, no one will get back in there, ever. That place is extraordinarily contaminated. That's a fact. Unless they hired a home, unless they do at Fukushima. So ask yourself, why are they mud raking the good names of bananas? What did bananas ever do to them? It should fall under hate speech laws because, damn it, bananas are people too. This message was brought to you by the Citizens Against University Professors and Scientists Demonizing Bananas and the Fukushima Hounds. Well, that's pretty much it. What do you think? I think it was pretty epic how it's like you can see how it's opening, exploding and opening inside and you know I'm, I'm amazed I'm glad I wasn't the one burning it so I didn't get it on my face like you did yeah I got some on my skin and oil burning oil hurts give us some thumbs up subscribe and as always see you next time